Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding spinner baits and whether or not I use a trailer hook or a plastic trailer. Kind of what's my general setup when it comes to spinner baits? Because at this point, there's so many different models out there that it can be kind of overwhelming. And in my opinion, if you're not using the right components, you could potentially be limiting your hookup percentage. You may be missing strikes. There's a lot of important little things that go into choosing the right spinner bait. And more specifically, what this video is going to be about is your trailer hook slash trailers. Um, I really do think that there is important value in this that often goes completely overlooked. So before I do share this information with you, I do want to remind you that I've got lake breakdowns that I do with fishthemoment.com. The link is in my video description. I provide 40 waypoints based on the lake for that specific time of season with a bunch of different patterns to choose from. It's a really good way to break down a lake. If there are lakes I've fished, you are getting my juice waypoints. I'm not holding back on this. So if you're looking for some help, check out the lake breakdowns. Also, if you want to support the channel, guys, don't forget to use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. It's a great way to support the channel, and it's very much appreciated. The little bit of money that I get through it goes right back into the channel to produce more content to hopefully help everyone catch a few extra fish. So let's talk about spinner baits today. Spinner baits are one of those things that there's a pile of different choices out there, different blade combinations, different wire links, different number of blades. Do you use a trailer hook? Do you use a trailer? There's a lot of different potential things that you can do to modify a spinnerbait. So I want to talk about a, the first couple of things. The first question I get is, do I use a trailer hook? My standard response to that is, I generally prefer not to use a trailer hook. And specifically, nowadays, I've been throwing that Berkley, the new Berkley Power Blade, which has an elongated hook, like this one right here. You can see how far down that hook goes. It's considerably longer than other spinner baits, uh, other spinner bait hooks. So the reason they did that was to get rid of the need for a trailer hook, which I think is great because a lot of times, depending on the trailer hook that you're using and the specific way that you're rigging it, in my opinion, you're actually preventing yourself from getting a lot of hookups because that trailer hook can wrap back around and almost act as a hook guard or a weed guard on your spinnerbait hook. So that's something I've done videos on before. I can link that at the end of this video. But generally speaking, I don't ever throw a trailer hook. And with the new Berkley Power Blade spinnerbaits, you don't need to do it anyways because the hook is extra long. So that leads us then with trailers. Trailers are something that uh, until the last couple of years, I didn't use much. But there is a very specific reason why I do think you want to use a trailer in some form. Uh, specifically, what that comes down to is by adding a trailer onto your hook, like this, uh, like this guy right here. This is just the power bait jerk shad. Uh, what I'm doing here is creating bulk. Because I'm choosing a straight line trailer, I'm not going to create any additional action, but I'm creating bulk. So I think at the very least, you want to put something on that creates bulk. And the reason that's important is when a fish comes up and hits this bait and they, they open their mouth to suck that bait in, they create suction. And if you've got bulk here, that creates more uh, a better ability for that fish to suck your bait in. If you don't have the bulk on a spinner bait, what you're dealing with is a lot of very fine components. And therefore, when they create that suction, it's not grabbing your spinner bait as well. And therefore, they're not pulling it into their mouth as well. So I'm a strong proponent at this point of using some sort of trailer on your spinner baits down to the point where it may not even be a whole bait. You could just cut this off right here if you wanted to, to put the bulk on the spinner bait and you'd still hide that on the shaft of the hook. So I think you want to put something on it. It could, a lot of times what I'll do is just throw like a, a, a half of a Berkley five inch general on, on it, just so I've got some bulk to it. So yes, I do think you want to throw a trailer, but it may not be a full bait trailer. It's the idea of just adding weight to the hook of your bait. And that's also gonna improve your casting accuracy, your casting dink, uh, distance. It's gonna do a bunch of different things for you. So 
that's at a minimum. If I'm looking to create a little bit more action or a better profile, what I'll go with is something like this jerk shed. And this, in this case, this is a burning spinner bait for me. This is a chartreuse, all chartreuse bladed bait, something that I'm going to be throwing for spinner bait or for smallmouth. And therefore, I'm going to be retrieving it fast. And if I'm retrieving it fast, my bait's going to want to rise. So if I use a trailer that's got a boot tail on it, that's going to pull the bait up even higher. So when I want to create a bigger profile, something like this jerk shad or a fluke is not going to grab any water. So it's going to keep this bait down lower than if you were throwing a traditional boot style trailer. So in this case, I've got another one here that's got the boot style trailer. This is a Reaction Innovations uh, Skinny Dipper on the back. If I throw this bait, and I tried to burn it, it would be right under the surface because a boot tail is going to grab more water, which is going to slow your bait up and rise it to the surface, which may be what I'm looking for at times. If I'm, say, fishing dirty, muddy water and I want to retrieve my bait at a very slow pace to try to create a lot of thump coming from both my blades as well as my trailer, then I want a boot tail. So if I'm fishing dirty water and I'm fishing precise smaller targets so maybe i'm fishing a lay down or a dock and i want my bait to stay in the strike zone longer i'm going to put a boot tail on it just to allow my bait to stay in a you know in a smaller area and keep it in that area for longer because i can reel it at a slower pace now having said that i've got a medium too so if i'm trying to retrieve a bait at a faster speed but want to keep deeper depth that's when i go with something like the jerk shad if I want to slow my retrieve down and I'm fishing muddier water, I go with a boot tail. But there's a lot of instances where I want to keep my bait moving at a slow pace, but I'm not fishing dirty water. I'm fishing clear water and I want to still create that bulk and a little bit of motion. And one bait that I've had a lot of really good success with recently is this right here. This is the Daiwa Nako Macho. It's a, a Gary Yamamoto produced bait, and it's a very thick, it's a very thick bait. So what this is going to do is provide me with a whole pile of buoyancy, a bunch of, uh, of additional plastic for the fish to suck in, but I get good motion out of this tail, but it's not thumping motion. So in that clear water, I generally prefer to have a straight tail, but in this case, this thing really does move around pretty good as I'm retrieving it, as I'm throbbing the spinner bait on the way back. You get some good tail motion and it just adds a lot of bulk. So in clear water, a setup like this is a very good setup, but I would not necessarily throw this in muddy water. I would switch to something that's got a boot tail kicker. So long story short i think trailers are very important to put on your spinner bait but it's very important to match it up with the circumstances that you're fishing what's the water color is it dirty is it clear do you have uh you know are you trying to keep your bait down deep are you trying to keep it up higher are you trying to keep it down deep but burn it back to the boat are you trying to keep it in place for longer periods of time it's really important to recognize the cover that you're fishing the presentation that's working, and then match the trailer that's going to enhance what it is that you're fishing versus working against you. So you may want to rethink the process. If you've got one trailer for everything, you may want to play around with some other trailers because you may find that you're prohibiting yourself from maybe getting a few extra bites by using only one trailer. You might be able to maximize the efficiency of that spinner bait by starting to play around with some different types of trailers like I've got here. So I'll put the links to these in the video description if you want to check them out closer. But I just think it's important to recognize that there are differences uh, in your trailers and how they're going to change the performance of your spinnerbaits, just like the blades will on your spinnerbait as well. We'll save that for another video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned for another episode.